is a man can row 40 km upstream and 55 km downstream in 13 hours. Also, he can row 30 km upstream and 44 km downstream in 10 hours. So, he has given us two cases. Case 1 where he goes 40 km upstream and 55 km downstream in 13 hours. And case 2 where he goes 30 km upstream and 44 km downstream in 10 hours. Find the speed of the man in still water. Find the speed of the man in still water. Right? You have to find the speed of the man in still water. So, how do you work on this now? See, you know the equations, right? I mean, basically the first equation says that time taken to go upstream plus time taken to go downstream is equal to 13 hours. What is time? Distance by speed, right? Time is equal to distance by speed. So, time taken to go upstream plus down, time taken to go downstream is 13, right? Time taken to go upstream plus time taken to go downstream is equal to the total time, right? The total time that we have. The time you all know is distance by speed. So this would be like distance upstream by speed upstream. What is speed upstream? Speed of the man minus speed of the stream. Plus what is time downstream? Time is equal to distance by speed. So distance downstream by speed downstream. Speed downstream is n plus s. Yes or no? Downstream speed is the sum of the speeds. Upstream speed is the difference of the speeds. Is equal to the total time t. So this is what we are going to work with. This is what we are going to work with. Yeah. Now, to make it a little simpler, what you can do is, let's assume that 1 by m minus s, that is speed of the man minus speed of the uh, uh, person, all right, uh, speed of the stream is equal to uh, u. Yeah, and 1 by m plus s is equal to d. Basically, u is upstream speed and this is downstream speed. I mean, I am taking the reciprocal of these. Uh, upstream and downstream speeds basically now substitute what happens so time taken in in the case one it says 40 kilometer upstream so time uh, sorry distance upstream is 40 divided by see 1 by m minus s we have taken as u so 40 u plus distance downstream is 55 55 times 1 by m plus s taken as d 40 u plus 55 d equals to total time which is given as 13 hours then in the second case this is equation one in equation two what happens he can go 30 kilometer upstream so 30 kilometer upstream which means 30 u plus 44 kilometer downstream 44 d equals to 10 this is equation 2 now basically what happens is you have got two equations and two variables can you solve for u and d yes once you solve for u and d you can get m minus s and m plus s then solve for m and s respectively i mean that's the overall process you can cut down a few steps based on your understanding like i've said right so let us solve these two equations what happens i think let us try to eliminate uh, u you have understood right u is a 1 by m minus s d is 1 by m plus s so how do we eliminate u uh, we can do one thing multiply the first equation by 3 and multiply the second equation by 4 so what happens you see 40 u into 3 120 u plus 55 into 3 is 165 d equals to 39 and this is 30 u into 4 so 120 u plus 44 d into 4 is 176 d equals to 40 so if i subtract the first equation from the second one 120 u and minus 120 u gets cancelled 176 d minus 165 d is 11 d which is equal to 40 minus 39 1 so basically d is equal to 1 by 11 see if options are given uh, okay uh, options are also given here maybe we can try with the options directly i'll explain that also to you but overall the process is this so d is equal to 1 by 11 d is equal to 1 by 11 so substitute if d is equal to 1 by 11 if d is equal to 1 by 11 i can conclude that m plus s is equal to 11 see d is equal to 1 by 11 i know that d is equal to 1 by m plus s so can we not say m plus s equals to 1 by 11 yes now if d is 1 by 11 substitute somewhere and find out u substitute d equals to 1 by 11 here so 55 into 1 by 11 which is 5 55 by 11 is 5 13 minus 5 is 8 so u equals to 8 by 40 u equals to 8 by 40 meaning u equals to 1 by 5 you understand from this we get u equals to 1 by 5 now again you remember u is equals to 1 by 5 here we know that u equals to 1 by m minus s so can you not say m minus s equals to 5 yes or no we know that u equals to 1 by m minus s here we have got u equals to 1 by 5 so i can compare m minus s with 5 m minus s equals to 5 that's it he's asking us to find the speed of the man which is m speed of the man is m in still water s is the speed of the stream solve these two equations 2m equals to 16 so m is equal to 8 m is equal to 8 so option 5 none of this will be the answer i know this looks to be lengthy but when you 
already understand the solution, I mean the, the step by step process, you, you can cut down a few steps, right? I mean you can directly start with these equations. Write these two equations, solve for u and d, which indirectly gives you m plus s and m minus s, and then you can solve for speed of the man or speed of the stream. Speed of the man or speed of the stream, right? There's one more way to solve this question. Let me explain that in a different color so that you can understand the difference here, right? There's another way to solve the question, which is which is going by options. How do you do that? Uh, for example, uh, I'll, I'll just do one thing. I'll, I'll clear the two equations that we have put up, right? How do you solve it otherwise? See, here we go. Look at the first equation. 40 km of stream, so I can say 40 by speed of the man minus speed of the stream plus 55 by speed of the man plus speed of the stream is equal to 13 as per the given question. Yeah? Similarly, there's another equation. I mean, I'm, I'm directly writing the equation the same. So, like 30 by m minus s plus 44 by m plus s equals to 10. Right? These are the two equations we have, right? Now, what is he asking us to find out? He's asking us to find out the speed of the man in still water, which is m, which is m, right? Now, what you have to think of is, see, I can substitute option 1, 5. But if I substitute option 1, 5, 40 by 5 minus s, 55 by 5 plus what? We can give you 13. Now think of it. What we have, I mean, this is like, you know, you have to be really good with numbers to be able to find out those, uh, you know, possibilities. The point is, I am getting an integer on the right hand side. We have got an integer on the right hand side, 13. Now the only way we can get an integer is both the terms have to result in integers. Or this should be 0 0.5, this should be ending in 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 will result in an integer. I mean, I want overall the left hand side also to be an integer, right? Now I have got a typical value on the right. On the second term here, 55. For 55 by something to be an integer, I mean, I am as that there's a high probability that both are individually integers. This term is integer, this term is also an integer, right? So, for this to be an integer, the denominator should be 11. The denominator has to be 11, right? 11 or something that can divide 5. I mean, divide 11 or let's say 5. It should either be 11 or it should be 5 because 55 is divisible by 11 and 5. Now, we already know that m is equal to 5. If you take m is equal to 5, s will become 0, which is not allowed, which, which is not possible, right? So s should be 6. But if s is 6, m 5 minus 6 will make it what? Negative. That is also not possible. So look like option 1 is incorrect. Option 2, m equals to 2, again would result in a similar problem, right? I mean, m is equal to 2, you are saying. So if this is 2, this should be 3. 2 plus 3, 5. So 55 by 5, 11. But if this is 2 and this is 3, this will become negative. So not possible. You, you're getting it. I mean, trying to eliminate the possibilities. Similarly, if you try with 4 and all, you'll find that none of these options will satisfy. Suppose if one of the options is given as 8, like I, I mean, I know that the correct answer is 8. So let's try with 8. What happens? 8 kilometers per hour. Let's say sixth option is 8 kilometers per hour. How, how do you check this now? Let's say if you take m is equal to 8. So if this is 8, this can be 3. See, so if m is equal to 8, this has to be 3. 8 plus 3 is 11. Why should this be 3? Because we want this to be 11. Only then this can be divisible, right? And, and in both the equations, in fact, you see the numerator is a multiple of 11, 55 here and 44 here. So the only way that both 55 and 44 are divisible with a common value is that the denominator should be 11. That common value has to be 11. Yes or no? 55 and 44 both have to be divisible by, both have to be divisible to give an integer. And that number can only be 11. So if m plus s has to be 11 and m is 8, then s will be 3. So just check if m equals to 8 and s equals to 3 is balancing this equation or not. Check. So 8 minus 3, 5. 40 by 5 is 8. Right? 8 plus 3, 11. 55 by 11 is 5. And 8 plus 5 is actually giving you 13. You can check the same thing in the second equation also, right? 8 minus 3, 5. 30 by 5 is 6. Right? And 44 by 11 is 4. 6 plus 4 is also giving you 10. So both the equations have satisfied. I mean, you have to really run very quick with the options in that case. Right? So all these options will get eliminated and finally you will be left with one option which is 8 kilometers per hour. Or since first four options are eliminated, you can say fifth option, none of this is the correct answer. Right? So this way of verification works, but you have to be really smart in doing that and really quick because otherwise this may be very, very time consuming. If you start trying out all the possibilities, it will be really time consuming. I am saying that, I am assuming that the high probability of m plus s it's, it's highly probable that m plus s is equal to 11. Based on that assumption, you will be able to el eliminate the options very quickly. Or otherwise, solve using these equations. I mean, you don't have to put everything on paper. Cut down a few steps and you'll get the answer. Anyways, option 5, none of this is the correct answer to this question.